Hello viewers, let us focus on furniture modeling. You know that AutoCAD is a software that can be used to create furnitures easily and accurately in three dimension. In this video, I would like to explain the steps involved in creating the 3D model of a round table. So I'll start with the circle command. When I'm asked to give the center point, I'll give 0, 0, the origin and for the radius, I'll enter 60 because I want the diameter of the tabletop to be 120 units. The circle has gone outside the screen, so I have to give a zoom command followed by extends option to see within the bounds of the screen. Now, I would like to switch over to isometric view. I'll just click over here to get that or else you can give vpoint command. I'm going to add a thickness to this tabletop. I give extrude command. And when I'm asked to give the height of extrusion, I'll enter three because I want the thickness of the tabletop to be three units. I would like to uh, fill at this corner because this corner is a sharp corner. So I'll give fillet command. You know, fillet command can always give you a smooth corner. Uh, so I'll give a radius option and I'll give a radius of 1.5 units and I'll select the first edge to be filleted. So it'll ask you for radius once again. I, I don't want to change the radius, so I'll just give an enter. So it'll ask you to select the next edge. So I have selected it. I'll give one more enter and I have got the corners filleted. Just give hide, but you can see that the edges are segmented. If you want to increase the number of triangles in these curvular phases, you can do that with the help of a variable that is called face at rest. So I gave a face at rest. and it can take values from zero to 10, I gave 10. Now give one more hide to see that uh, you have increased the number of triangles in the curveless surface. Now we have got a smooth curve. Now I would like to switch over to an elevation. So I'll just click on the front over here. I've got a front elevation. Next, I'm going to create the central member which supports the tabletop. So I'll start creating it by drawing a polyline. But if you want to draw a polyline, you can't do that in the ZX plane. You know that you have to align the XY plane here. So what I'll do is I'll go to UCS command and I'll go to view option of UCS command with which you can align the UCS or the XY plane with the existing view plane. Now I'll draw a polyline starting from the origin and I'll draw, I'll show the length of the or the height of the tabletop. And the height of the tabletop is 80 units, out of which 3 units is already given here as the thickness of the tabletop. The rest is 77, which I am going to indicate here. So I gave 77, so this polyline indicates the height of the tabletop. Now I'll draw some construction lines. I give some offsets uh, to draw the profile to construct uh, the central element. So I, I, I made a horizontal line here. Now I'll give one more offset of uh, 10 units uh, upwards. Then I'll give another 10 unit offset and I'll give another 7.5 unit offset. So when I trace the profile, these construction lines will be useful. Now I'll draw a polyline uh, starting from 0, 0. And this polyline is going to indicate the profile for the central member. So the next endpoint I have picked here, I'll turn my O snap off by pressing F3 key and I'll simply uh, trace a polyline. I'll just switch over to arc option now. I give arc, then I'll go to second point to draw a curve over here. Now likewise you can sketch the profile. You can sketch the profile. Now I'll draw, I'll switch over to line mode now and I'll click a point over here uh, to this intersection. Then back to perpendicular. Then I'll draw an arc like this. Then I'll come back to line mode. Then I'll go back to zero comma zero and close. So this profile will indicate the profile of the central member. This profile is going to be revolved about this vertical axis. 
or you can revolve it about the y axis to get that central member. So I give a revolve. I'll select the profile to be revolved. When I'm asked to give the height, when I'm asked to specify the axis, I have to, I have various options. I can use an object that can be used as an axis or I can use the present y axis at the axis. So I'll give y, so that is, that will be used as an axis of revolution. Now, it will ask you whether you want full circle to be revolved. Yes, I want 360 degrees. So it is revolved through a distance of, of through an angle of 360 degrees. Now I'll draw uh, some legs because we need uh, some supports here to support the center member. And these supports are nothing but legs of the table. For that, I will again draw profiles. I'll start from here, a profile. Then I'll go to arc option. Arc option, then I'll come back to a point over here. Then I'll pick here. Then you come back to line mode. Then you can draw a perpendicular here. Then uh, you can draw another line. Then I'll go to arc option and second point option. Then I'll pick a point over here. Then you can just go to line and you can close it. So this profile will indicate the profile that is going to be used to create the leg, one of the legs. So I'll extrude this profile now. And the height of extrusion, I'll give as three units. Now I would like to see this leg in the plan view. So if you want to generate the plan view, the easiest method is you can just get rid of these profiles now. You can erase these profiles because these construction lines are no longer required. I have erased those construction lines. Now, if you want to generate a plan view, you have to first uh, take the UCS back to WCS because that is a reference coordinate setup. So I'll give UCS command, then I'll give an enter. So I went back to world coordinate setup. Now you can just click over here on the top or else you can give the plan command to get the plan view. Now you can see that you can see the leg here in the plan view or in the top view, but uh, this, it has taken a thickness in this direction, so it is not properly centralized. So you have to move this leg in the upward direction through a distance of 1.5 units, which is half the thickness of the leg, half the extrusion height. Okay, so now it is perfectly centralized. Now I have to, create multiple copies along the circumference of the circle. Now I'll give array classic command for that. I'll select the object to be arrayed, then polar array, it is basically a polar array. Then center point of the array, you can select the center over here. Now number of item is given as four. I would like to retain that as such. Now you can just preview the array. Now it's okay, it's perfectly fine. Now I'll just give okay uh, to uh, create the array. Now I would like to switch over to isometric again uh, to see the table which I have created. If you want, you can have various representations for this table. Now the present representation is called a hidden representation, but if you want, you can switch over to another representation uh, that is called shaded representation. You just go to visual styles and realistic shading you can go for, and you can orbit it, and you can view the various curves you have created for the central member as well as for the legs. Now, if you want, you can go to the next higher level of representation after applying the materials. So let's see how to apply a finish to this particular table. For that, you have to give a command called rmat. Then you will get a material dialog box. In here, you have the type, the type, the uh, material that is required. I would like to apply a teak wood finish to this table. So I'll give say a teak here and give an enter. And so it will search for the teak wood here in the library. So now you have various types of teaks displayed here. So I'm interested uh, to apply this particular teak or I would like to select, for example, this teak. So I have selected it. Then you uh, select the table, select the entire elements in the table, just click on that. You can see that it has applied that finish over here. Just close the dialog box. Now you can just orbit it and you can view it from various angles. But this is not the realistic finish because uh, shading will not show you the realistic finish. For that, you have to go to rendering. 
So a rendering is more realistic shading after applying the finishes as well as lights. So let us put up a light for the time being. I would like to create an omnidirectional light here. So it is better to switch over to plan view for that. Now I'll give a command called light. So it will ask you whether you want to turn off the default lighting. I'll just give OK. Now it will ask you the, uh, what type of light you want to create. I have a point light, spotlight, web light, etc. I would like to go for a point light. Point light. So it will ask you for a source or the location where you want to keep it. I want to keep the point light elevated uh, through a distance of 100 units from the tabletop. The presently XY plane is kept on the tabletop. So I want to define such a location. I should make use of point filters. So I'll go to dot XY off. I'll pick a point over here. Now, when I'm asked to give Z, I'll give 100 units. Now, it'll ask you for a source 100 units. I'll, I'll do it once more. I'll dot XY off. I'll pick a point over here. When I'm asked to give Z, I'll give 100. Enter. Now you can control certain parameters like intensity, photometry, shadow, etc. So I'll go for intensity and I'll give a intensity value of 5. And I'll go to shadows. Uh, the shadow by default is enabled. So I want to enable the shadows and I'll give OK. So I've created an omnidirectional light here. See, omnidirectional light is a light which radiates equal amount of light radially into all directions. Now I would like to create a second light over here. So I'll go to light again. And I'll go to point light once more. Once again, when I'm asked to give the source location, I'll use filters to def define it. I'll give dot xy off. I'll pick a point over here. When I'm asked to give the Z coordinate, uh, you know, I want the light to be lowered. It has to be below the tabletop. So XY is kept on the tabletop. So I should give a negative value. I'll give say minus 50 for the Z coordinate. And for the intensity, I'll give five. And, and for the shadows, I don't want to enable shadows for this light. So I'll turn it off and I'll give an enter. So I've created basically two omnidirectional lights here. Now I will go to uh, a V point or I'll go to a three dimensional view. I'll just zoom it. I'll zoom it. Then I can go for a render. I'll give a render and enter. So you can see that it is rendering it. It is rendering it. But uh, the effect of light, if you want to see more, you have to create such a view. You have to create a view in such a way that you can see the effect of lights more properly. So I'll go to orbit again. I'll render it. Okay, there is a command called uh, uh, render R pref. That's what stands for render preference, in which you can control the size of the render window. I'll change the increase the size of the render window, and you can also uh, control number of other parameters, which will be explained in detail later on a different video. So I'll give a render again, and you can see that. It is performing rendering, but in a larger window. But uh, the shadow is almost obstructing uh, the, the, the central element here. You also have another option uh, to render it that using a command called render crop. Uh, you give render crop and select the two corners. So you can uh, see the result of rendering right on the screen. But you will see some jaggy edges here. Anyway, these are the different method to visualize a 3D model. You can uh, go for shading or else you can go for rendering for final presentation. Hope this has given you some insights on modeling, uh, rendering and lighting and a bit on finishes. Thank you for your patience.